In this video, I'm going to demonstrate um, another example of using MUC method of undetermined coefficients to solve this second order non homogeneous differential equation. Very similar to problems we've had before, but let's just type of review the process and go through systematically finding both the complementary solution and a particular solution for the overall general solution. So the problem is y double prime plus 16y equals 2 cosine 4x. Very first thing you want to do is to get that complementary solution. So we need the auxiliary equation right off the bat. Look at the coefficients on each of the derivative terms. You see you have a, co a coefficient of 1 on the y double prime term. So that would correspond to m squared in the auxiliary equation. You don't have a y prime term in this uh, differential equation, so the coefficient in front of the m would be 0. And then, of course, the last coefficient you have is 16, and you set that quadratic equation equal to 0. And it's pretty clear that in this particular case, you've got, uh, you've got two complex roots. One is 4 times i, and the other is minus 4i. So we therefore know that the complementary solution in this case has the form c1 cosine 4x, because this is the beta term right here. Keep in mind that alpha is equal to 0, because you have no real component there. So the other part of the complementary solution would be c2 times sine 4x. Always remember that if you have a cosine here, you need the pairing sign there. And keep the angles the same. Don't drop that 4x when we write the sign there. Now, we need to consider a particular solution. So right off the bat, what we could do is look at the right-hand side of the original equation. Notice that it's cosine 4x. And we could say, well, according to MUC, we should try something of the form of a constant a uh, cosine 4x plus b times sine 4x. But remember, you always need to double check to make sure that if any components of the particular solution are found in the complementary solution, you need to remove that duplication. So in this particular case, we can see that we've duplicated both the cosine and the uh, sine 4x terms in the complementary. So in that case, we need to multiply uh, our particular solution by x to see if that will remove the duplication. And so in this particular case, we'd have ax cosine of 4x plus bx sine of 4x and we certainly don't have any terms of the form x cosine 4x in the complementary solution, so we're good. So now we can proceed now to compute the derivatives of our particular solution and therefore see if we can force a match when we plug in the particular solution to the left-hand side, set it equal to 2 cosine 4x, and see if we can determine a and b. So we'll start off by computing the derivative. And again, you're just going to use your product rule. We'll do the first time. That'll be ax times the derivative of cosine 4x, which would be minus 4 sine 4x plus cosine 4x times the derivative of ax, which is just a. And then we need to do the same thing with the bx sine 4x term. So we'll add to this bx times the derivative of sine 4x which of course is just going to be 4 times <clears throat> cosine of 4x. Don't forget your derivative rules for trig functions. Plus sine of 4x times the derivative of bx, which of course is just b. All right. So it's probably a good idea to kind of clean these terms up. In other words, find all the matching sine 4x terms and cosine 4x terms before you proceed to compute the second derivative. And so in that case, look for your sine. Let's we'll start off by looking at the sine 4x terms. We've got a minus 4ax here, and we've got a b there. So if we collect those terms, we'd have b minus 4ax times sine of 4x. Do the same thing for the cosine 4x terms. Here you're going to have an a. Here you're going to have a 4 times bx, right? So what we'll have is a plus for bx quantity times cosine of 4x. So all I've done is rewritten the derivative, first derivative of our particular solution, so it might be a little bit easier to compute the second derivative. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Why are we computing the second derivative? 
Well, because we are going to plug in our particular solution into the left-hand side of differential equation, we know what our particular solution form is. We have it right here, but we need that second derivative of it. Okay. So if we do that, all right, now what we need to do is go through and, and uh, compute the second derivative using the product rule again. So we'll do it, uh, take the first term here, b minus 4ax times the derivative of sine 4x. It's going to be 4 cosine 4x plus sine 4x times the derivative of the term inside the parentheses here, right, which is going to be minus 4a because that's what's in front of the x, derivative of constant b is 0. To that, we go to the other side, take the first term, a plus 4bx, careful not to drop any of those integer terms there, times the derivative of cosine 4x, remember it's minus 4 sine of 4x, added to cosine 4x times the derivative of that parentheses term, a plus 4bx, and that should just give us 4b. And now it's a cleanup procedure to pull all the like terms together. Easiest thing to do would maybe put a print, big parentheses here. And let's start off by collecting all the cosine 4x terms that we see. Well, go from left to right. We're going to have a 4b. So we'll write that in. What else are we going to have? Well, we're going to have minus... 4 times 4 ax, so that's going to be minus 16 ax. Keep looking, looking, and then finally we'll come back to here and we're going to have a plus 4b. Okay. Let's do the same thing. We will add to this terms times sine 4x. Again, don't drop the angle. It's always sine 4x here. All right, let's start again and look for sine 4x. Well, there's a term right there, right? That would be minus 4a. Keep scanning. All right, there, there. There's two terms here. We're going to have another, um, we're going to have a neg another negative 4a, and we're going to have a negative 16bx. Now let's clean up inside those parentheses. What we'll end up with is what? 8b minus 16ax quantity times cosine 4x, uh, excuse me, I'm going to do this, minus, we're going to pull that minus sound out, 8a plus 16bx, and all that will be multiplied by sine 4x. And this is y double prime of x. So now what we need to do is plug this into the original differential equation and set it equal to um, 2 cosine 4x and see if we can determine what a and b would have to be. So if we do that, we'll have y double prime of x plus 16 y sub p of x. In other words, we're looking at putting in the particular solution. So now let's do this. We'll just copy what we just had up here again. 8b minus 16ax careful with your parentheses, cosine 4x minus quantity 8a plus 16bx times sine 4x. And then to this, what we need to do is add 16 times the particular solution we're working with, which if you look back up in your notes there, it'll be ax times cosine 4x plus bx sine 4x. So let's, again, gather terms here, see what's going to cancel out. So what we're going to get, if you look at these terms right here, you're going to have a 16ax times cosine 4x. That's going to wipe that term completely out. You're going to have a 16bx positive. There you're going to have the negative of it. That wipes out. So and normally this is what should happen. You should get a very nice term coming out at the end where it's just going to simplify to 8b cosine 4x minus 8a sine 4x. But recall that this means that 8b cosine 4x 
minus 8a, what we get when we plug in the left-hand side of the differential equation must be equal to 2 cosine 4x. So immediately we can see what we have to have. Um, it's very clear that a has to be equal to 0 because there is no sine 4x term over here. And also that 8b must be equal to 2, so therefore b must be equal to 1 fourth. So the particular solution, therefore, a is 0, so all we're left with x, 1 fourth times x, or x divided by 4 times the sine of 4x, so that the general solution, then, if we write it this way, y sub g of x, which is the sum of the complementary solution plus the particular solution, always the case when we're doing MUC. The answer we should have is C1 cosine 4x plus C2 sine 4x plus the particular solution we determined x over 4 times sine of 4x. And that is the solution to that second order constant coefficient differential equation, which is non-homogeneous the right-hand side being 2 cosine 4x.